So thank you for joining us today. This is the second video in our installment of Revit Architecture Deployment for Revit Architecture 2013. Today we're going to answer some questions on from the Autodesk Wiki pages as well as the Autodesk discussion groups. We're going to find out how we can modify a Revit deployment to point to different paths that we originally created and also apply update release one to Revit Architecture 2013. Stay tuned, you don't want to miss this. So we have a few items on the agenda today. First of all, this is a follow-up video to the original video titled Creating Deployments of Revit Architecture 2013. There I was using a DFS path with centralized content. Since the release of the video, Autodesk has released a service pack for Revit Architecture 2013, Update Release 1. So this video will focus on applying the service pack and also making changes to my existing deployment to make sure the software is current and up to date. Uh, I noticed some wiki pages and some questions on how to extract the MSP file from the EXE. So I'm going to take a minute and show you guys how to do that. Lastly, we'll go over how to modify a deployment image. We don't need to create a new deployment image. Instead, we'll be modifying our original deployment to include the new service pack and also change one or two file locations, one or two file paths. These are the paths that are referred to in the Revit.ini file. We're going to centralize content, but also we want to change one or two locations. We'll also make sure the deployment works by installing it onto one of my virtual machines. If we have time, we'll also go through some questions that came in the past couple of weeks regarding Revit Architecture 2013, deploying it using Group Policy or SCCM or Atari. So I'm going to jump right into my virtual machine here. Very simple virtual machine, nothing special. And I'm going to pull up this directory, the user data directory. This is jwong at data roaming Autodesk Revit. Autodesk Web Architecture 2013. These are the files that are copied to each user that logs in and starts up Revit Architecture 2013. This is actually found in the program data slash Autodesk RAC 2013 in the user data cache directory. The Revit.ini file is a Revit.ini file that it gets pulled from the deployment image. I actually wanted to modify this because of changing needs in Office. You notice that the IES file location is pointing to the same location I specified in the other video in the previous video, and I wanted to modify this. But instead of modifying it on this only workstation, I want to modify it on the deployment. That way I don't have to do it for 10 or 20 machines each individually. I can do it centrally. I'm gonna browse into the microsoft.local slash deployments. That's where I keep all my deployments. I'm gonna scroll down to Revit Architecture 2013 64-bit and open the INI file. I'm gonna select the project path and I'm gonna change it don't want this. I actually want to make it C drive Revit project data. Keep it local. This is one of the reasons we have this is because work sharing would not work if you keep the project data on the network drive. So I'm going to change that to local. And also IES file location. I'm also going to keep that stored locally. This actually is better locally because the IES data, the shadows, the lighting actually works better when it's kept locally. So with this change, I'm going to save this file right here and close it and go into tools and create and modify. So instead of creating a new deployment, we're just going to modify the existing one with the changes that we need. So right after you click that, make sure you the security window, you just click run and you're going to get the dialog window to modify the deployment image. Just give it a second to initialize. I'm not going to change any, make any changes here. I'm just going to click on next. And make sure you read the end user license agreement. Just click next anyway. And right here is where we're going to select to change. But since our IES content mapping has changed, since we modified the INI file and the project path has changed, um, that's okay. Those are messages you can ignore. Let me scroll all the way down here. And this path, the, the INI file that I'm using is actually the same INI file, but just for safe measures, I'm going to browse into that directory again and reselect that INI file. So again, that's Microsoft.local slash deployments. And that's Revit Architect 2013 64. Click open. Click import and scroll down just a little bit over here. You can see that the IES content is pointing locally as well as the project data. For safe measures, I'm going to click append, scroll down just a little bit, 
you can see that also there's a new service pack. Instead of downloading it here, I already downloaded it onto my virtual machine. And I'm just going to bring that in this explorer up. I put it on my C drive and I'm just going to copy that, that file name, including the executable exe extension, and open it to man window. To, this is to extract the MSP file. So I'm going to go C colon slash right click paste space slash E for extract. And I'm going to go C colon slash paste again. And then the extension is MSP. So I'll just click enter after that. You'll see on the back that there's a new file that just got generated once I click enter. And it's roughly the same size at 70 megs, a little smaller. And that's the MSP. That's how you extract the MSP from the EXE. Pretty simple. I'm going to close out the command window, click add, browse to my C drive, which is on my computer, C drive, click on that guy, oops, click OK, scroll down, nothing changes from here, and I'm going to shrink that, and click create. So right now it's repackaging Revit Architecture 2013 with the changes I've just made and also including the update release one that I just put in there as well. It usually does take a couple of minutes, nothing substantial, 10 or 20 minutes max. And you can see that Revit Architecture 2013 version 2, you can just click finish when you're done. All right, so now that the deployment is already modified, I'm going to browse into the same directory. I'm going to click on a shortcut. Click run when the security window opens and shrink the background. It's going to run the installation of Revit Architecture 2013 with update release one with my modified paths for files. So you see the prerequisites being installed here and give it a couple of minutes and it's going to start installing Revit Architecture 2013, new content, the installation files. It's also going to update, see that version 2 there. And it's done. Start Revit Architecture 2013 to verify that the update release 1 is applied and also the updated paths are there as well. This is the first run, so it does take a few minutes for first run. No worries there. Since this is a virtual machine, hardware acceleration is disabled, that's fine. And I'm going to browse to my C drive, you'll notice that Revit project data folder is there, so that's good. That was created automatically during installation. Minimize that guy. And let's go into Revit options and browse to file locations. you see that the file locations are retained as well as the changed, the modified ones. Uh, C Revit project data is retained as well. Architecture templates, the construction templates, they're all good. So, after applying update one, file locations are the same, and just verify it's update one, click on about, and it is. So there you have it. Everything works just as expected. So some questions that came through my inbox and also the Autodesk wiki pages and forums with people who have installations of Revit that do not retain the settings from the Revit.ini file. The most common error message is error code 5, which actually means that the installation does not have access to the deployment image. First, you want to check if you have any deny permissions on the directory, and also make sure that everyone group has read permissions on the share. I would also make sure clearing the temporary folder and rebooting the client workstation before attempting another installation. To ensure that the Revit.ini file is copied from the deployment image to the client workstation, check the revitcustom.log, the log file, will actually tell you if the installation included a copy of the Revit.ini file. I've seen some postings about the MST file having double slashes instead of one, causing the directory to become invalid. I haven't seen the problem myself, and the deployment actually pushes via GPO without any failures. So as one of the other posters mentioned in Autodesk wiki pages, if all else fails, you can also make a batch file to manually replace the revit.ini file after installation. 
This is probably the workaround that will always succeed since it forces the Revit.ini file on the client workstations to be updated. As with all things in IT, you want to fix the problem and minimize downtime. So thanks for watching. I hope everybody found this follow-up video helpful. If you are still having trouble with your Revit deployment, be sure to contact your reseller for technical support. If you don't have a reseller, feel free to give us a call. Be sure to check out my blog and YouTube channel for other helpful tips and tricks. This is James Wong, signing out.